Hi everyone! Today on my bench I have a Presonus Studio Live 32R Digital Rack Mixer for repair. It works, but it has an intermittent annoying problem. Sometimes it does not initialize correctly on the first cold boot. Everything looks fine, but there is no sound. And after reboot it works perfectly until it sits for a while unused and then it can happen again on the first boot. Let's see if we can figure this out. Here we are inside, let's have a closer look. Let's start with the mains input connector and power switch. So here we have a power supply, main board on the bottom, two additional boards with input connectors, this thing has 32 analog inputs, combo XLR and TRS connectors, 24 on the front, 8 more on the back. Also on the back we have the main mix output, right and left, and 16 outputs from auxiliary mixes. AVB network port here, separate Ethernet for control, and USB port. Also on the front there is a mute all button, headphones output with volume control, several LEDs and SD card which can record the main mix, two channels only, unfortunately. Mixing boards of this line can do multi-track recording, 32 or 64 channels depending on the model plus the main mix. But rack versions can only record the main mix, two channels, which is very, very disappointing. Let's have a look at the main board. There are some markings on the board, which is very helpful, in particular test points for the power rails. We can see digital section here, analog section here and here with uh, Cirrus Logic 8-channel ADCs for the inputs, DAX here for the outputs, we can see several uh, DC to DC converters, here and here, and there are test points marked 3.3 volts here, so this uh, DC to DC converter must be producing that rail, probably for this NXP microcontroller and memory. This XMOS chip uses its own power rail, which is 1 volt. There is a test point here. These two uh, analog devices, DSPs, use 1.1 uh, volt rail. This DC to DC converter must be responsible for that. This is an Altera chip. I'm not sure what power rail this one uses. There is a 5 volt regulator here. And these converters are for analog stuff. 48 volt uh, phantom power supply and uh, plus and minus 15 volts for op amps and such. So, I suspect electrolytic capacitors first mostly those involved in the digital section, and in particular DC to DC converters. And uh, they might be a bit difficult to test in circuit, because many of them are in parallel with each other, so perhaps I will need to desolder some of them to check. Let's take a look at this pair of electrolytic capacitors. I can see only two pieces of this kind on the whole board. 100 microfarads, 16 volts, and uh, this one seems to be in parallel with something else, because we read about 1 millifarad and very low ESR, about 67 milliohms. But this one seems to be alone, and look at this, 43 microfarads and about 1.8 ohms ESR. I don't expect 100 microfarads at 1 kHz, but I would expect much higher than this, perhaps twice higher. And I would expect much lower ESR, perhaps several times lower than this. 
So this does not look very good, at least in circuit. Here I found for comparison new capacitors by Rubicon. 100 microfarads, 25 volts, but a bit smaller in size. And uh, look at this. Ninety microfarads and about 0.28 ohms ASR. Much better. So I desoldered this pair, and this is the one by Rubicon, slightly smaller but a bit taller. So let's check these out of circuit. About the same as in circuit. And this one as well. So, I am not sure they have degraded. Maybe they were like this new. But the Rubicon cap is certainly much better. And I found one more brand for comparison. Also 25 volts and also slightly smaller and taller, just like Rubicon. And look at this. 81, almost 82 microfarads and about 0.53 ohms ASR. Not as good as Rubicon, but again much better than these two. So I replaced these two capacitors and of course this didn't solve the problem, but I had to try. Now let's look at this second kind of the surface mount electrolytic capacitors on this board. I see about 20 of them all over this board, 220 microfarads, 6 volts. And uh, I checked about 10 of them are in parallel around these two DSPs on the 1.1 volt rail. So I would expect to see about 2000 microfarads. But look at this. Less than 500. And the SR is not too bad. About 145 milliohms. I desoldered a couple of them to test. They are quite difficult to desolder from this board because of massive ground plane and uh, thick power tracks. It would be much easier to destructively remove them by twisting them off and uh, desoldering the remaining pins one by one. But I wanted to test a few. So let's have a look. About 55 microfarads and 1.3 ohms ESR. And the second one... About the same. And this does not look very good. I did not have replacements handy, so I bought a couple of different brands from Mauser. These are Nichicon, the same 220 microfarads, 6 volts, here is one of them. And these are Panasonic, rated 16 volts and high ripple current, here is one of them. And both are slightly taller than the original, which is not a problem at all in this case, there is plenty of room. And perhaps even better, because it might be easier to achieve good parameters if they are larger. So, let's take a look. About 94 microfarads at 1 kilohertz and 0.83 or 84 almost ohms ASR, which is much better than the original and Panasonic. Look at this. 188 microfarads and uh, about 0.19 ohms ASR, which is much better. So I am inclined to use 16 volt Panasonic capacitors, and I'm not sure this is going to fix the problem, 
but why not try? This is not very difficult, not very expensive, and is likely to improve life expectancy of the mixer anyway. So why not just eliminate this as a possible cause and see what happens. So I replaced all 220 microfarad capacitors. Let's check. We measured less than 500 microfarads here and about 145 milliohms ESR. Look at this. About 1700 now and about uh, 36 milliohms ESR. Much better. Unfortunately, this did not help. Something else is wrong. I started to dig deeper and I'm looking at the board under the microscope. And this is the main microcontroller. Let me shine some light on it. Here we are. And right next to it, we can see this unpopulated switch. S1 host reset. And this SOT23 package, marked V72BB, I believe. And this must be a power supervisor chip. We can check using this ground point and this capacitor, which is on the 3.3 volt rail. So let's check from this ground point. We can see that this pin is connected to ground. And now, using this power rail, we can see that this pin is connected to 3.3 volt rail. And this pin is pulled up by this resistor to the same rail. And this pin is reset. We can trace it to this pad of the reset switch. And the other pad of the reset switch is ground. So, uh, this chip should hold the reset of the microcontroller until this power rail stabilizes and for some time after that, perhaps tens of milliseconds or maybe even hundreds, I'm not entirely sure. And I found one more chip like this right next to Altera FPGA chip here. Let me shine some light on it. Here we are. So this SOT23 package right next to it is another power supervisor chip with exactly the same marking on it. And we can check if they do their job properly. I soldered a couple of wires and captured the reset of the microcontroller on power up. Channel A is 3.3 volt rail and channel B is reset. I set the trigger right here when power rail goes up and we can see that reset was held for more than 4 divisions, 40 milliseconds per division, so about 180 milliseconds. And this looks fine. And now the same test for FPGA, no problem with reset here. And now I am trying to rule out the power supply. So I disconnected wires from this supply, which is 12 volt 6 amp supply. And uh, it has screw terminals, so disconnecting was easy. And I connected the wires to my lab supply and combined two channels for the total of 5 amps. And the mixer in this reduced configuration consumes much less but the initial spike still can be high to charge all capacitors and such. And I did not install this additional board and uh, on the back as well. So that board has channels 1 through 12. So this is channel 13. And this is called boot. And look at this channel 13. Absolutely nothing is happening. And now, after reboot, look at this channel 13 again. Working now. So, still the same problem. Aha! Uh -huh. I think I found something. 
I noticed a couple of test points here marked plus two and a half volts and minus two and a half volts. And on a cold boot the negative is missing. It is sitting around zero. But after reboot it appears. Let's look into this. I managed to catch the fault again. Let me show you. This is ground. This is positive 2.5 volt rail. No problem. And this is negative. Zero. This chip is positive regulator and this chip is negative regulator. And there is no input on the negative regulator. Here it is on this transistor nearby. And this is because the negative 15 volt rail is missing. Here it is. Test point. 0 0.75 positive instead of negative 15. And this is positive 15 volt rail. Slightly lower, but that is fine. So we need to find out why the negative 15 volt rail is not starting. Here is the negative 15 volt DC to DC converter. And by the way, look at these solder balls here and here. I have seen many more all over this board. Perhaps they used a bit excessive amount of solder paste. So, this is a bit unusual configuration because this chip is a step-down converter and the input is 12 volts and the output is negative 15. So the output of this chip is connected to ground of the mixer and the local ground of this chip is used as the negative 15 volt rail and this way the 12 volt input looks as if 25 volts above local ground for this chip. And this way it can still work as a step-down converter. And I looked up the datasheet of this chip and I see a couple of differences here on the board. One is this uh, capacitor between pins 1 and 2. It is a boost capacitor for the internal gate driver and the datasheet recommends 100 nanofarads. And I measured this one and it is about 10. Maybe it's not a problem, but I'm not sure why they would deviate that much from the recommended value. And another thing is uh, pin uh, 10, which is enable. If not used, the datasheet recommends to connect it to the input. And I'm not sure it is used here. I could only trace this pin to this 1 meg resistor, which is connected to the input. I don't see any reason why this chip needs to be disabled here, but even if this enable pin is used, one meg pull-up seems to be a bit too much. I replaced the 10 nan boost capacitor with 100 nan and nothing has changed. So I replaced the one meg resistor from 12 volts to the enable pin with 100k and I have not seen the problem ever since. Here is the negative 15 volt rail. Minus 13.78 and the positive is about the same, 13.74. I tried to reproduce the problem many times and the negative rail seems to start every time so far. So, after a couple of days of testing, I believe this thing is fixed. Thanks for watching. Bye.